Amen. All right. The title of the sermon this evening is What is an Apostle? What is an Apostle? So I'm going to be doing a, a Bible study tonight on who an Apostle, who are the Apostles in the Bible, what are the characteristics or the identifiers of Apostles. And uh, we're going to begin here in, excuse me, Matthew chapter number 10, which is really one of the most famous passages of the apostles. When the apostles are really first ordained and sent out, uh, if you will, when they became apostles. And that's going to tie in with the, the number one identifier of what an apostle is, what makes one an apostle. Look here in Matthew chapter number 10, verse number 1. It says this, And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. We will touch on this in just a moment, but notice he's calling his what? His 12 disciples, and then at this time or this moment, he's giving them a specific power that they did not have before. Notice that they are now able to work signs. They are now able to work what the Bible refers to as signs and wonders or miracles. And we see that they are, they have powers Power against unclean spirits to cast them out, and it says, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Verse 2. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. So now it refers to them as apostles, and it says this. The first Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus and Lebius, whose surname was Thaddeus. Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. It says this in verse number 5. This is very important. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. The word apostle actually means sent. That's what the word apostle means. It means messenger or it means sent. So it makes perfect sense here when we see in verse number 5, after he had already referred to them as apostles, he has his 12 apostles, what does he do? He then sends them forth. I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse number 1. Now this is very important to understand that it is not only to be sent. If you study in the Bible, <clears throat> this is very clear. It's not only to be sent, but it is someone that has been sent directly by God in a supernatural or a divine way where they see God, God comes to them in some way or another, and then divinely sends them forth with a special job. That is what an apostle is. It means to be sent by God. <clears throat> I want you to look in 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse number 1, what Paul says here. He says, am I not an apostle? It's a rhetorical question. Of course he is. He says, am I not free? And now watch what he says next. Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord. Someone that is an apostle is someone that uh, stood before, saw Jesus Christ, and was sent forth by or from Jesus Christ. All of the apostles in the Bible, every single person that is referred to as an apostle, all meet those identifiers. Paul right here, when he says that he is an apostle, he follows that up with, have not I seen the Lord Jesus Christ? Have I not seen Jesus Christ? Our Lord. In order to be an apostle according to the Bible, you have to be sent directly by Jesus. You have to have seen Jesus and been sent by him. I want you to go to 2 Timothy chapter number 1. You are sent with a message according to the Bible. 2 Timothy chapter number 1. The whole reason that you are sent is you are sent with a message. Look at 2 Timothy chapter number 1. The Bible says this. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. So it's like a messenger. If you are sent with a message, you would be a messenger, right? Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And then he says this, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. So what is the promise of life? What's the, what word would we use to summarize that, that he's talking about? The gospel, right? We'd be talking about the gospel. So he is an apostle according to, according to the promise of life or according to the gospel. He's an apostle according to, the, uh, according to the gospel, saying that he is an apostle, a messenger, or someone sent with this message. And what is it? The gospel. So that is what an apostle is, is someone sent with a message. And in this case, of course, it is the gospel. I want you to go now also to Hebrews chapter number 3, verse number 1. Hebrews chapter number 3, verse number 1. <clears throat> 
You may or may not have noticed this, but in the Bible, uh, Jesus Christ is referred to also as an apostle. And the reason being because he was obviously also sent directly from God with a special message, divinely from God, of course. Look at Hebrews chapter number 3, verse number 1. The Bible says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. And then watch this. Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. So notice that Jesus also is known as an apostle. Why? Because he was sent directly from God, wasn't he? He was divinely, supernaturally sent by God with a specific message. And what did Jesus go forth preaching? What was it? Repent ye and believe the gospel. The exact same thing that the apostles were sent forth to do. What were they sent forth to do when he, when he, when he uh, ordained the twelve or appointed the twelve and he sent them out? What was their reasoning to go out? Was it just to heal people? No, they were going out to preach the gospel. That is what a, a, an apostle is. It's someone that is a messenger. Someone, it means to be sent with a message. They went out to preach the gospel. The exact same scenario with the Lord Jesus Christ. Once you go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse number 12. So that's important to know that it is a face-to-face -face, uh, um, seeing. I want actually first, before you go there, go to 1 Corinthians. Let's look at 1 Corinthians first. It is a face-to-face -face sending. It is a face-to-face -face sending. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse number 3. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse number 3. We have the, the definition of what the gospel is here. That's why this is pretty famous. 1 Corinthians. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We'll begin in verse 3. It says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Look at verse 5. And that he was seen of Cephas. So after he rose again, he was seen of Cephas. Then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. Now, I want you to notice, number one, is that a lot of people are under the impression that there are only twelve apostles. Well, he already said he was seen of the twelve. Did you notice that? He was seen of the twelve. Who's that referring to? Twelve disciples, of course. The twelve apostles, of course. Then he says, after that, verse 7, after that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, saying of all the rest of them. Every last apostle that lived at that time saw Jesus. Look at what it says after that, also verse 8. And then he says, and last of all, he was seen of me also. <clears throat> now watch the, the follow-up statement, very important. As of one born out of due, due time. Notice he says he's born out of due time. What's happening at this moment? He's becoming what? He's becoming an apostle, isn't he? You notice that? He, he was last of all seen of me as one born out of due time. So when he sees Jesus, what happens? At this moment, he becomes an apostle. Why? Because it has, it's someone that is directly seen and sent by the Lord Jesus Christ. So, or by God in general. Look at what it says after that, verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles <clears throat> that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. So we see a couple of different times there that it means that in order to be an apostle, you have to be someone that saw Jesus. This scripture is very clear that he was born out of due time when? When he saw Jesus. Jesus came to him. We have that story, of course, in the book of Acts when he appeared unto him on the road to Damascus. And he saw the Lord Jesus Christ, didn't he? We have in Galatians chapter number 1 that he says that the gospel that he preached, he didn't receive of man, did he? So it's very possible that even Jesus appeared unto him again after that. That's not recorded in the Bible. And he received the gospel specifically and clearly from the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have multiple times where Paul actually saw Jesus, where Jesus actually came to him and he saw him. And, Jesus, and Paul says that at the moment that he saw Jesus... And he was sent forth was when he was born out of due time. To do what? To become an apostle. That is the definition of an apostle. is to be sent face to face directly by God. It is a divine sending. So you need to understand that being an apostle is not the same as just being a pastor. Being an apostle is not the same as just being a preacher. It is someone that God comes to in a supernatural way. And he himself is before you and he sends you forth with a special message. It's not just being a preacher. It's not just being a deacon of a church. 
It is a supernatural job. I want you to go now to uh, where we were going to turn to, 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. So, in order to be an apostle, number one, the first identifier is that you have to see Jesus. You have to have seen Jesus after he rose again, we see there. You have to have been sent forth from Jesus like the apostles you know, were sent forth during Jesus' earthly ministry. And at that time, then, they were first referred to as what? Apostles. Now, seeing him is just one. One identifier. But there was another identifier. When he sent them forth, what was the very first thing that it mentioned that they could do? That I, that I emphasized a little bit. What was it? They were able to work signs and miracles, weren't they? They, they were able to, you know, uh, uh, you know, to do miraculous things. Why? By the power of God. So look at 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. There are signs of apostles. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. Look at verse number 11 first. I am become a fool in glory. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you, for in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. So he's saying, I'm the, the greatest apostle that you can think of, I'm not behind him in any spiritual gift or in any spiritual way at all. Then he says in verse 12, watch this. Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you, in all patience, in signs, and wonders, and mighty deeds. I want you to notice that only apostles were able to do these great miracles, weren't they? They are referred to as signs of an apostle. A sign of an apostle is something in a way you can what? Identify who is an apostle and who is not. He's writing to the church of Corinth. You know, people have a strange idea sometimes that everybody's an apostle. You know, Pentecostals will, you know, they like to just take everything way too far. You know, obviously they're not even saved, but they like to, everything, they like to super, just, just, just super spiritualize everything, don't they? Everybody becomes an apostle. Everybody's got every spiritual gift according to them. It's like, no. There were, all, there were specific people that were apostles. There were, if you could work miracles, that was the sign of an apostle. That's what proved you were an apostle. Apostles, number one, have to, had to have seen Jesus and been sent forth from Jesus directly. They had to see him and been sent forth, number one. Number two, there are signs of an apostle. We saw those signs. Let's, let's look at that quickly. Go back to Matthew 10. We're going to compare a couple of times when the types of signs are mentioned of what an apostle was able to do, the miracles that they worked. Go to Matthew chapter number 10. Matthew chapter number 10, and again, where we began. Look at verse number 1. And he, when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, watch this, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. I want you to go to Acts chapter number 5, verse number 12. <clears throat> Acts chapter number 5, verse number 12. So we see that they were able to cast out unclean spirits. They had power over unclean spirits. <clears throat> Acts chapter number 5, verse number 12. They were able to heal people with different uh, diseases and infirmities and sicknesses. Look at Acts chapter number 5, verse number 12. It says, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. So who, according to the Bible in the New Testament, are able to do signs and wonders and miracles? Just anybody? You have all these people, these Pentecostals especially, of course, they're the, they're the biggest frauds of this, who try to stand up and act like they're healing people and all these different things. It's a, it's a sham. It's a lie. It's a fraud. You know who healed people? Not just every Christian did not. Paul is convincing those in Corinth to say, hey, you know, you know, you know that I am an apostle of how? Because I worked the signs of an apostle. You know what the, the implication is there is none of them there were apostles. None of them were. But he was. Why? Because he did the signs of an apostle. We look at the 12 disciples. They became apostles when? When they were sent forth. Which it means to be an apostle. means to be sent to do what? To preach the gospel directly by God. And they saw him. And then what else? They were able to work signs and, mar and miracles and wonders. We see the apostle Paul says, hey, truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you. You, I proved myself. How? Because I was able to do the signs that only an apostle can do. Here we see in Acts chapter number 5, verse number 12, who were the signs and wonders worked by? It tells you very clearly, only the apostles. And a, pers a person in the New Testament that was able to do miracles, signs, wonders, these types of things, you know who they were? Apostles. I want to pound that in your head. The apostles. That's 
who were, was able. That is a sign of an apostle. You couldn't say if other people were doing the miracles or anything, you couldn't say this is a sign of an apostle, could you? Because then there would be other people outside of apostles that you know would seemingly be like an apostle. But it's a sign of an apostle. Only the apostles could do this. So it tells you in verse 12, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And then it says, And of the rest durst no man join himself to them. But then look, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches. That at the least the shadow of Peter, look at this, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by while he's walking by it saying, passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude of the cities round about unto Jerusalem bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed every one. Remember that word unclean spirits? Notice this ties exactly in what we saw in Matthew chapter number 10. Now, I want you to go back. I didn't, I didn't have this down, but go back to Mark chapter number 16. Mark chapter number 16. Mark chapter number 16. Of course, this is a Pentecostal's favorite, favorite passage for multiple reasons. We are kind of talking about this before the services amongst the men just a moment ago. But we see in Mark chapter number 16, no, we see we see ascending. We see ascending of the disciples. We see ascending of the apostles. I want you to look at verse number 15. And he said to them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now watch verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And then it says, verse 19, So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. So we see in verse number 17, it says, These signs shall follow them that believe. Now this is not any person that believes. A lot of people will misunderstand this. A lot of people you know, will uh, misconstrue what is being said here. He is referring to the apostles. He's referring to who he, is, who he is talking to right now. They are the ones doing, these are the signs of an apostle. And again, we see them being sent forth as apostles. And what are they doing? They're able to work these miracles, aren't they? If every person that believed uh, was able to do these things, it would make no sense for Paul to be saying to the church of Corinth, truly the signs of an apostle was wrought among you. When he is trying to convince them that he's an apostle. If all of them... They obviously believed, right? He writes throughout that and says that they believed. If all of them believed and they worked these miracles, would it make any sense to say, in that case, truly the signs of an apostle were all wrought among you? I mean, they'd be saying, well, I'm an apostle. I'm doing these times. It makes no sense, does it? It's because the, who he's referring to here that are able to do these things, when he says the, they that believe are his apostles. <laughs> then he says this, truly this, uh, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, Shall they cast out devils? What were the apostles able to do in Matthew chapter number 10? They had power over what? Unclean spirits. You never, you never have an example of a single person cast out a devil that's not an apostle in the Bible. Ever. <clears throat> not only that, you don't have an example of anyone healing the sick. The New Testament, ever, that's not an apostle. Ever. Think about that for a minute. Then it says this. In my name shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. You know who did that? Acts chapter number 2. Who is it? The apostles. The apostles were the ones who did that. Look at verse 18. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Now, you know, of course this is right down the Pentecostal's aisle, right? All of these things, they love this passage. And I, supposedly, I guess they're trying to prove that they are an apostle, that they have the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit has come upon them because they're able to do these things. Now, he says, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Do you think they're going around just drinking deadly things just so that it doesn't hurt them? I want you to know the only case when the Bible says there, they shall take up serpents. Do you know the only situation where that happens? Do you know what Paul's doing? Is he handling the snake like a bunch of snake handling Pentecostals? Like, hey, I'm an apostle. Look at this. No, it's not. 
He, you know, he actually is like gathering wood and throwing it in the fire. He's standing around the fire. And there happens to be a viper right there, a snake, and it jumps out and bites him. Just like he says after that, if they shall drink any deadly thing. If. What's he mean? If they just so happen to drink a deadly thing, it's not going to hurt them. It's the same concept. If they just so happen to be bit by a snake, it's not going to hurt them. That's all that it's saying. And you have all these Pentecostals out there trying to supposedly prove. They're trying to prove that they're an apostle. Number one, you never saw Jesus in the first place, buddy. Number one, you, when were you born out of due time, my friend? You know, they, they claim that it comes to them foolishness. Amen. But here's the thing. What do they do? They try to pick up snakes. Totally butchering this passage. That's not what it's talking about at all. Show me one apostle handling a snake. Foolishness. It's a stinking circus is what it is. It's ridiculous. You know, like we were talking about before, too. They want to get a hold of these, like, Mexican West Coast rattlesnakes, don't they? They want to get a hold of this stuff that people get bit by all the time and don't die. Right? You can get bit by a rattlesnake and live very easily. There's many people that do it constantly, all the time. Out in especially, like, the desert, Phoenix, Tucson, people get bit by rattlesnakes. It's not as big a deal as people think that it is to get bit by a rattlesnake. It's very possible that you'll live. Why don't you grab a hold of, like, a king cobra? I want to see you get a hold of a king cobra and start handling it. You want to prove to me you're an apostle, buddy. I'll get you a king cobra and handle that thing. What is it, like 20 seconds you're dead after you're bit? Something insane? I know there's some Australian snake that's, like, the most venomous snake in the, in the world. That it's like, you're bit, and it's like, you got, like, 60 seconds to live, literally. Something insane. I mean, I, that may be a little bit of an exaggeration. Maybe, like, six minutes. But it's like, you don't have time to get to the hospital. Grab a hold of one of them things. Guarantee you won't. All these people, they want to they act like they're going around, they're healing people, they're an apostle, they're healing people like Peter. Why don't you go to a hospital where there's a bunch of, a bunch of real sick people? Why don't you, how about I just take you with me and I choose the person that's sick? Why don't you heal them? Why don't you go through the hospice where people are on their stinking deathbed? Why don't you put your hands on them? Because you're a fraud, that's why. Because you're a liar, that's why. This, you know, these passages are abused by people. It's not saying you know, they're going to handle snakes. No, no, he's protecting them. It's the same way, you remember when he sends them? Oh, we didn't read this portion of the passage. You know what he tells them? He's like, hey, don't, don't take anything with you. Why? Because he's going to protect them. He's going to provide for them. You know what he's saying here? Don't worry about it. Those that believe, talking about the apostles here, it's just another way to refer to the apostles. Those that believe, you know, uh, they're going to work signs, miracles, they're going to do all these things, they're going to be able to heal the sick. We see the apostles doing this. If they get bit by any serpent, God's going to protect them. If they drink any deadly thing, it's not going to hurt them. What do, they, what do these phony apostles try to do today? They'll act like they're drinking some kind of poison. Drink some cyanide. Prove to me you're an apostle. You know, because you know, you know you're a liar. You know that you're a fraud. That's why you wouldn't do it. It's foolishness, isn't it? It's got, you know, if, if you have the Holy Spirit and that's why you're able to do these things, that's why you know, you're able to handle these snakes and stuff, God should be able to protect you from that Sinai just like he can protect you from that bleach, buddy. Shouldn't make any difference, should it? Is, are you saying the Spirit of the Lord's uh, you know, limited there? He should be able to protect you from a king cobra just like he can protect you from the rattlesnake. Is the Lord's hand shortened? Yeah, that's not the problem is what it is. God's not the one in that. That's, they, they have an unclean spirit. They need a real apostle to come in there. Obviously, there's none living today, but that's what they would need is somebody to go preach them the gospel. So we see a perfect parallel. Matthew 10, we see a perfect parallel here. And then we look in the book of Acts, all the examples and who's working miracles, who's doing signs, who's doing wonders. All the apostles, isn't it? Every single time. Every single time. We look in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, and what does Paul say? Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you. We look in Mark chapter number 16, he's sending forth who? The apostles. It's all the same signs and wonders and miracles they were able to do when he sent them forth the first time. And they're referred to as what? The apostles. The only people you ever see doing these in the Bible are what? Apostles. It's, it's clear as day. It's extremely clear. Two identifiers of an apostle is, number one, you are sent directly face-to-face -face from God. It's a supernatural sending where God sends you. Just like Jesus Christ was sent specifically with a specific message in his ministry. Of course, that's why he came to preach the gospel and then, of course, to die for us is the main reason. 
But he had, a, he had a ministry and a reason that he was here, you know, uh, before he died on the cross, and it was to go preach the gospel, right? It was to go and ordain his apostles. Then we see the apostles are seen directly by who? The Lord Jesus Christ. He sees them, and, it's, and Paul says, as of one born out of due time. So when did he become an apostle? When he saw the Lord Jesus Christ. That's very important, and he was sent forth. He says in Galatians chapter number 1 that when he received his, his message, his gospel, that it was not of men. He was not taught it of men, he says, but of the Lord. Another proof that Jesus is God and not just a man. Not just a man, right? Because it, it wouldn't make sense to say that I received it of, you know, I, I, he says, neither was I taught it of men, but of God or of the Lord or something like that. And you know, he's referring to as Jesus. That's who he saw and that's who taught it to him. So Jesus is God, of course, according to the Bible. I want you to turn now to... Uh, <clears throat> Let's go to Galatians chapter number 3. We'll see this again, that an apostle is the one who works these signs and miracles. Apostles are the ones that work the signs and miracles. Look at uh, Galatians chapter number 3, verse number 1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? <clears throat> this only would I learn of you, receive you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Verse 4. Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? Verse 5. He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. I believe I pointed this out recently, but you can also prove that Paul was the only one working miracles by this. Notice how this is worded. He's speaking to the Galatians, and he says, he says, He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you. Are there many people? No. He's able to just say, He that you know, works the miracles among you, and what do they do? They know exactly who he's talking about. Why? Because it's only one person. Who is it? It's one of the apostles. He's referring to himself. Paul was an apostle. They don't have to think about it. Because it's, there's no one else there. It's not just everybody who believes works signs, wonders, and miracles. No, he just says, He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you. You know, uh, doeth he it, I believe it says. How's it worded? Doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Now he's, of course, saying that it's by faith, right? <clears throat> I want you to go to, let's look at another passage here. Go to Acts chapter number 14, verse number 14. A lot of people are under the impression that only there are only 12 apostles. Well, that's not true. <clears throat> there, are, there are many more than 12 apostles, and we saw that once already in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. It first said that he appeared unto the 12. It doesn't say what they are, but who is he referring to? There's no one else he could be referring to. It's the disciples, the 12 disciples, who are also known as, after Matthew 10, when they're sent forth, with this power as the apostles. So he says he appeared unto the twelve, and then after that he says that he, he appeared unto, and last of all, he appeared, appeared unto the apostles, saying the rest of the apostles, and then unto him who was born out of due time. So Paul was an additional apostle on top of that. This actually brings up an argument people will have in, uh, when, in, in Acts chapter number one. When people are trying to figure out, you now I've heard a lot of people argue in in Acts chapter number 1 when they have the discussion about who's going to take the place. And it says, you know, that they appointed the two men. They're going to decide between the two. It's Joseph called uh, Barzabas. And then and it says who is surnamed Justice. And then uh, Matthias is the other man, right? And people will often say that, I've heard this many times preached in my life, that God did not appoint what was going on here. This was not God. This was just the apostles doing this. And just the 11 apostles, because Judas had died, so they needed one more man to be an apostle. That's what is going on here. They're like, well, they need that 12th apostle, because there's only, well, we know there's only 12 apostles. And God was actually not the one who ordained what was going on in Acts chapter number 1. This is just of man. So when they get, it ends up being Matthias who becomes, you know, that, that 12th apostle. They say, well, that was not of God. So God actually chose Paul, and he was the 12th apostle. That's not how it works. There's more than 12 apostles. I'm going to show you that right now in Acts chapter number 14. I'm going to give you another example. And this is another example outside of 1 Corinthians 15. Remember, he appeared under the 12, then he appeared under James, and then the rest of the apostles. That proves that there's more than 12. And then unto Paul, Paul is on top of the twelve, and then whoever, however many else are mentioned there. 
Acts chapter number 14. I believe it's verse number 14. Yes, look at Acts chapter number 14. Which when the apostles, watch what it says, Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people crying out. Barnabas is not of the 12. He is, he is in, in addition to that. So now here you know what you have? Another person that is referred to as an apostle of being Barnabas. So you have Barnabas and, and Paul. So look what it says. Which when the apostles, now it tells you who these apostles are, Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people. So right there you have two more people on top of the 12 who are referred to as apostles. Let's look at another example. I want you to go to... Uh, Go to Luke chapter number 10. This is a parallel passage um, with, in, uh, Ma in uh, Matthew, I can't remember exactly where it's found, but it, it takes place after where we began the sermon, Matthew 10. So he first sends out his 12 disciples, and he ordains or appoints them as apostles by giving them the signs of an apostle and by sending them directly, right, with a message to do what? Preach the gospel. Well, this takes place immediately after that. This is just a parallel with that gospel. It's a synoptic gospel, and it takes place immediately after that. Look at what it says in Luke chapter number 10, verse number 1. Keep that in mind. It's right after that. It says this. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also. Now, what did he appoint first? What were they? Apostles. And then it just says right after that, the Lord appointed other 70 also. What's it saying? He appointed another 70 apostles, didn't he? So there are the 12 apostles. There is at least Barnabas. You know, there is Paul on top of that. That's 14 right there. Now there's 70 others as well, which these may be the other 70 that after they, uh, Jesus appeared to the 12 and he rose again, that he the, the last 70 that he appeared to. But we have at least 70 plus 12 plus 2. There's not only 12 apostles according to the Bible. That's a misunderstanding according to the Bible. So I want you to turn to, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. I'll finish reading right here while we're here in Luke 10. Notice what happens here again. After these things, the Lord, that's Jesus. Notice Jesus referred to just casually in the Bible, the Lord. The Lord appointed other 70 also, and then watch what, they, what he says. And sent them to and to before his face into every city and place, whether he himself would come. So what are they meant to do? They're, they're there to go forth and preach the gospel. They're sent. Right after that, he gives them the same protection that he gave the apostles previously. He says, go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse, nor strip, nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. What is he doing? He's giving them that hedge of protection. He's giving them that same supernatural protection, and he is going to provide for them just like he gives it to them when he sends them forth in Mark 16. It's the exact same thing, just happening a second time after he leaves. And that's when, this is, this is the difference. The first time they're told specifically to do what? Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles, nor in Samaria, but in Israel. Then he says in Mark 16, go into all the world. It's the same sending. The exact same things are following them. They're doing the exact same things. The only difference is first they're sent to preach to the Jews. They're sent to preach to the Israelites. The second one, same thing, same power, same signs, same wonders. Everything's the same. He's going to be protecting them, all of that. Now I want you to go into all the world. That's the difference. That's the only difference in the two. They're both just the sendings of an apostle. That's all that they are. So you're in 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. This talks about people that are false apostles. And we talked about this just a moment ago, of course. There are many people today, charismatics, Pentecostals. What will they say? There's a guy, uh, 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 Gino Jennings. Did I pronounce his name right? Is it Gino? Gino Jennings, who says that he's what? He says that he's an apostle. The guy's a liar. He never saw Jesus. Jesus didn't come to him and appear to him and say, Hey, you know, take neither purse nor script. You know, these signs are going to follow you. If you're an apostle, then I want to see truly the signs of an apostle are wrought among you. Prove to me you're an apostle. Show me a sign. Show me a miracle if you're an apostle. They're not apostles. These guys are liars. The Bible talks about them. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. Look at verse number 12. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. Watch this. For such 
are false apostles. So there are people that claim to be an apostle that are not an apostle. They're a liar. They're a false apostle. Deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Notice that they transform themselves into an apostle of Christ. Do they look like an apostle? Do they try to act like an apostle? If you look at them, is it just obvious that they're a devil? No. No, it tells you, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. They looked like what an apostle would look like at that time, didn't they? These, I'm sure these people were probably pretending and, 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 and uh, faking miracles, faking different things. But they weren't really an apostle. They were a liar, weren't they? They were a false apostle. And this is what I get away from this. If someone claims to be an apostle and they're not, they're a false apostle. Do you know what they are? For such are false apostles, deceitful workers. They're a liar. That's what they are. If someone ever tells you that they're an apostle, they're a deceitful worker. That is the biggest red flag that he is a false prophet, an unsaved false prophet. I dare you, I challenge you to show me a man that says, I'm an apostle that preaches the right gospel. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know whether that tree is corrupt or whether that tree is good. Whether that tree is bad or whether that tree is good based on what comes out of his mouth. That's how you test a false prophet. Show me a false a, an apostle. Show me any man that says, I'm an apostle, someone that you know is a self-proclaimed apostle and I, that preaches the right gospel. It'll never happen. There's no one. There's no one that says, I'm an apostle that gives her. I've never heard of it. It doesn't exist. Because if you claim to be an apostle and you're not, you're a liar. You, it's not just, oh, I'm confused. No, you're a deceitful worker. You're a deceitful worker. You know what you're doing? You're transforming yourself into you know, uh, an angel of light is what you're doing. No marvel, it says. No more. Don't be. Don't be uh, surprised by this. A lot of people have trouble, you know, saying there are people out there pretending to be what they're not. That's why Paul says, and no marvel for Satan himself. Don't marvel about this. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. There are evil people out there who purposely try to put on a facade. They try to look like they're a good person. They try to look like they're you know, a prophet or an apostle of God. But do you know what they are? They're a false apostle. They're a deceitful worker. Go to Revelation chapter number 2. We'll see this again. Revelation chapter number 2. Verse number 2. Nothing's different today. Of course, we should expect to see the same things the apostles saw. What were they? False apostles at that time, and what were they? Deceitful workers. Look at Revelation chapter number 2. Look at verse number 2. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. So notice, these people are evil. Look what it says next. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. Very important. You know what it says? They tried them which said they are apostles, which say they are apostles and are not. How do you try them? They're signs of apostles, my friend. I can figure out whether you're an apostle. Because there are, there are truly the signs of an apostle who are among you. There's a way to figure it out. Number one, Paul says, let me say this too, I forgot to make this point. Paul says that, that he was the last apostle, he says that he was born out of due time. Do you know what that means? At the last minute. That's what that means. He was the last one. You know, he says he was born out of due time. That phrase is found again in Romans chapter number five. Does anybody remember exactly how it's worded? You know, it's talking about us being sinners and then, uh, and then, you know, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, it says. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly, saying at the last minute when we really needed him. Saying there was no time left is what it means. In due time. You know, right before, you know, it got real bad is what it's saying. That's, that's the point. That's what Paul is saying. Because, you know why? Because Jesus stopped coming down and just appearing to people all the time. He had risen from the dead, and they, he had sent forth his apostles... And the reason, we've, I forgot to look at this, but the reason why he gave them signs and wonders was while the word of God was going into all the world, it says in Mark 16, to confirm the word. That's why they were at that time, they had a specific mission to go around and they were able to perform miracles because they were confirming the word that they were preaching. Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you. If you want you know, to, to, to claim to be an apostle... 
Number one, I know you're lying because Jesus isn't appearing to you. There's no way you could have seen Jesus. He's not appearing to anyone else. Paul says he was one due, born out of due time. He was the last apostle. You had to have seen Jesus and been sent forth directly from him, but you would have to be able to uh, work the signs of an apostle. You'd have to be able to do the signs, the miracles, and the wonders. And it's pronounced miracles, not miracles, okay? Mir miracles. Everybody thinks I'm serious. Everybody's like, <laughs> miracles. I'm from like the Midwest area, but I have some southern slang here and there. Go to uh, 2 Peter chapter number 3. 2 Peter chapter number 3. We'll look at verse. We'll begin in the beginning. We are going to start at the beginning of the chapter. <laughs> we'll see the level of the apostles. They're actually put on the same platform. Platform may not be the right word, but they're put on the same level or degree of the holy prophets of the Old Testament. You know why? Because what were the prophets? What, what's the similarities? They were sent, both of them were sent directly by God with a supernatural message, weren't they? They both went and they preached, thus saith the Lord, directly from God, weren't they? Look at 2 Peter 3 1. Notice the parallel drawn between the two. They're identical. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure mind by way of remembrance. Watch this. That ye, be, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken, watch this, before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. You know what he just told him? Be mindful of the Old Testament and of the New Testament. Do you know who wrote the Old Testament? The holy prophets. Do you know who wrote the New Testament? The Apostles of the Lord. The apostles of the Lord and our Savior. Notice he said, I want you to remember two things. I want you to remember the, the things that were spoken before. That means like in the past, right? By the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of our Lord and Savior. So the Old Testament and the New Testament are on the same level, aren't they? Why? Because it's divinely inspired by God. You know who wrote the books in the New Testament? Apostles. They're all penned by apostles. They were directly sent by God. They had a message by God. That's who God had authored the New Testament. You look at the Old Testament, you know who authored it? The Holy Prophets. They both were sent by God. That's, they're both, it's a divine sending. It's not just something to flippantly say, hey, I'm an apostle of the Lord. You have to see the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to be sent with a very specific purpose. And it only took place during that period of time while Jesus had his ministry, number one. And then those that were lastly sent, and Paul being the very last one, after Jesus rose from the dead. And it was to confirm the word, is very important, while the gospel was spreading throughout the entire world. That was the whole purpose of the apostles, was to get the word of God out there right after <clears throat> the gospel had been complete, the death, burial, and resurrection. Now go tell everybody. I have a special job for you. Go tell the whole world. Go to Luke chapter number 11, verse 49. We'll see this again where the apostles and prophets are spoken of in the same, on the same level or in the same way. Luke eleven forty-nine. Says in eleven forty-nine, therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets. And apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute. Verse 50, that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. Go to Jude 17. <clears throat> Only one chapter in the book of Jude. Go to, we're going to end here. <clears throat> Just to see this last mention here, nothing uh, too significant in this mention. But Jude, verse number 17, it says this. <clears throat> but beloved... This is a parallel of what we read in 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter 3, that chapter and this chapter are parallels, if you didn't know that. Jude, verse number 17. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. So notice these are the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when he writes this, he says, remember before the words which were spoken of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is after that, isn't it? 
And these words were spoken before the past now. I, well, I don't know when that particular you know, uh, letter was written, but it, these words that he's referring to were words that were spoken in the past of that. There are no more apostles today. If someone says they're an apostle, they're a false apostle, and they're a deceitful worker. And we need to be like the church in Revelation chapter number 2, where we know the signs of an apostle. And we can try an apostle and see whether they're lying. Number one, we know right off the bat, if you say you're an apostle today, you're lying. Because that was a special job for those that were there and saw the Lord Jesus Christ. Am I not an apostle, Paul said? Have not I seen the Lord Jesus Christ? You have to see the Lord Jesus Christ. These people aren't seeing Jesus. At that time, Jesus would appear to them, and then he would send them forth. It's a special sending. That's what it means to be an apostle, to be sent. Right? Then there are signs and miracles that an apostle works. He said, truly are not the signs of miracles wrought among you. Truly are not the signs of an apostle wrought among you. The only people we see able to do all of those things all throughout the New Testament are who? Apostles. Uh, lastly, another nugget was there are not only 12 apostles, are there? There are 12, plus he appointed another 70 also. What? Apostles? And then we saw Barnabas and Paul also referred to as apostles. So what do we know about that? They must have seen Jesus, been sent by Jesus to go forth and preach that special message of the gospel, spent sending it out. They had a special job for them at least, right? And then on top of that, those people had the signs of an apostle. They were able to, you know, uh, have power over unclean spirits. They were able to uh, heal the sick and do all kinds of great things. And God had a protection over them during this time. Because why? He wanted to confirm the word. He wanted to spread the gospel. As soon as it had been completed, he wanted to give an opportunity to the whole world to hear the gospel at that time. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, dear Lord, uh, for the gospel. We thank you for all the truths in the Bible, dear Lord. We thank you for giving us the, the identifiers so that we can identify whether or not someone is a true apostle or a false apostle. Uh, help us to stand up and preach against the false apostles, dear Lord. Help us to take a stand and not to just uh, sit by, dear God, while people are, are, are deceitful workers and doing evil things. Help us to understand that that's a big deal. Help us to have the same attitude that those in the Bible had it. That, uh, you know, that, that we, we don't put up with it just like Paul did. And he called it out as it was. Uh, we thank you for, uh, for all the great stories of the apostles and having the great example uh, of, of them and the great things that they did, dear Lord. And we also thank you for the power of God, dear Lord, of all the, the, the miracles and the signs and the wonders that we can read about and just have a, a, a deeper understanding of, of your greatness and of your power. We love you and be with us and keep us safe tonight. And in Jesus Christ's name, amen.